Hello everyone, thank you for joining us today. We're in the grounds of the beautiful Chrome Hill Estate, just across the Wolfenden Bridge in Lambeg. There's a beautiful home just up behind us here and the lady allowed us to uh, come into the grounds just to do this uh, short devotional. The house was built in 1670 and in 1690 King William of Orange stayed here on his way south to the Boyne. And there's all sorts of different trees in the grounds of the Chrome Hill and the most interesting of all is the tree that surrounds me here. In fact there are two trees, you can probably see the, the trunks in the ground just coming up either side of me. This tree was planted, or these trees rather, were planted in 1787 by the Reverend John Wesley. And he came and planted these trees and entwined them together and they've grown into one above me. They've become one tree. Uh, and it was to symbolise what he felt should be the important union and the spirit of unity between the Methodist Church and the Church of Ireland at that particular time. Now this tree is very, very old, 1687. It's become somewhat diseased. It's been pruned and tree surgeons have looked at it. And it may be that this tree won't be here for all that much longer. But it's been looked at by different people from all over the world, from Australia, from New Zealand, from parts of America, because of its historical significance. And it's also been uh, nominated for different competitions for trees right across Ireland. But he planted these two beech trees and twined them together to denote the unity between those two churches at that particular time. And he often, as he travelled throughout Great Britain, Wesley often preached under trees just like this. But you know, I think of another tree today, that tree just outside of Jerusalem, the cross. The Bible says, cursed is every one that hangeth upon a tree. And the word of God says in First John or First Peter chapter two and verse 24, who his own self bear our sins on his own body on the tree that we being dead to sin should live unto righteousness by whose stripes ye were healed and on a cross on a tree if you like the son of god loved us and gave himself for us so that he might reconcile man and god together that sinners might be reconciled to a holy god that are separated by nature we're separated from God because of our sins. We're separated from God from birth. But because of the death of Christ, he has joined us, reconciled us, united us to God through faith in himself and through the finished work of his cross. Maybe today you're not saved. Maybe you're still separated from God. You're not united to Jesus Christ. You don't belong to God. There's still that separation. You've sinned and have come short of the glory of of God. And there's a great gulf that you cannot cross, that you cannot reconcile yourself to him. But if you come to Christ and come to the cross, you can be redeemed, you can be reconciled, you can be united again to God and join to him in a union that can never, never be broken. I trust that if you don't know the Savior, that you'll recognize the great love of God in sending his son to die upon a cross and to shed his precious blood so that you can be reconciled and redeemed and joined unto God for time and for eternity. Why not trust Christ today? Why not call upon the name of God today? Why not ask him into your life and into your heart to be your Saviour and your Lord, to cleanse and forgive you and set you free? Thank you for listening and may God richly bless you in the days that lie ahead.